welcome back in the previous session we discussed on the epithelial junctions which included tight junctions gap junctions and three types of anchoring junctions that is uh, zonular adherence desmosome and hemidesmosome in this session we will now discuss on the clinical anatomy of epithelial tissue the basement membrane may undergo marked change in some pathological conditions the basement membrane thickens in the small blood vessels in the individuals with diabetes and in individuals with glomerulonephritis the basement membrane thickens in the glomerular capillaries of the kidney in individuals with glomerulonephritis some epithelial cells in the body are prone to abnormal or excessive erratic growth which cannot be controlled and can progress to a precancerous growth called neoplasia neoplasia means new growth or tumor this can spread into other parts of the body it starts in one part of the body and will not stop at that place it spreads on to other parts of the body if not treated at the earliest two types of tumors can be observed benign which is non cancerous and malignant which is cancerous early neoplastic growth is often reversible and does not always result in cancer normally cells communicate to the neighboring cells to maintain the homeostasis and balance between cell division and cell death in cancer the balance is disrupted and the cell starts growing without any control there are genes which control cell division apoptosis and rate of proliferation disruption in this pathway due to genetic mutation will lead to uncontrolled proliferation of cells so what happens is due to genetic mutations many regulators that function in normal cell division apoptosis and also that control the rate of proliferation start acting abnormally the abnormal function of regulators helps in the expression of many other genes which cause uncontrolled proliferation of cells now what are the causes for the genetic mutations genetic mutations can occur due to factors like cigarette smoking alcohol obesity and poor diet smoking is the biggest cause for cancer deaths followed by addiction to alcohol obesity and also poor diet now let us understand what is poor how poor poor diet in the sense is not the number of times or the amount you eat it is the proper diet with proper nutritional value okay so what you need to understand here is it is not how much you eat okay and it is not the number of times you eat whether you reduce your number of times or increase your number of times it is the proper diet with proper nutritional value which you have to count on so what should the diet include hmm? the diet should include more of fresh fruits and vegetables and not too much of carbohydrates like rice chapati and junk food which is processed and kept for long months okay so please take care of your uh, diet properly cancers originating from epithelial cells are called carcinomas or in other words carcinoma can be defined as malignant neoplasm originating in the epithelium it can originate in the epithelium lining internal hollow organ or covering external surface of the body that is skin okay they account for 80 to 90% of all cancer cases 
two types of epithelial cancers are observed. Squamous cell carcinoma, where cancers arise from the squamous epithelium. This type of cancer is usually found in skin. The second type of cancer is uh, arising from glandular epithelium, which are of two types, adenomas and adenocarcinomas. They are called as adenomas when it is benign in nature and adenocarcinomas when it becomes malignant in nature. They often spread easily through soft tissues. Adenocarcinomas occurs usually in breast, lungs, colon, prostate and bladder. Under certain abnormal conditions, one type of epithelial tissue may undergo transformation into another type. Okay. Now, reversible replacement of one adult cell type with another cell type is called metaplasia. It occurs due to chronic irritation. This transformation is not malignant, but if the irritation of metaplastic epithelium continues, it may become malignant. For example, cigarette smoking causes metaplasia in respiratory tract. The pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium is replaced by the stratified squamous epithelium. If the irritation persists, it may turn into malignant. In individuals with chronic vitamin A deficiency, transitional epithelium in urinary bladder is gradually replaced by stratified squamous epithelium. Celiac disease or gluten sensitive enteropathy or SPRU is a disorder of the small intestine in which one of the first pathologic changes is loss of the microvilli of the absorptive cells. This is caused by an immune reaction against the wheat protein called as gluten. Okay. So, during the digestion, okay, uh, this gluten, it acts, uh, this produces, okay, um, diffuse enteritis, okay, changes to the epithelial cells leading to malabsorption, eventually to pathologic changes in the intestinal wall. The malabsorption problems and structural changes are reversible when gluten is removed from the diet. Okay, so this is important observation which has to be made. So, all most of the diseases, okay, most of the diseases are reversible if we change our lifestyle. Okay, several genetic mutations like uh, Carter-Jenner syndrome or immotile cilia uh, syndrome, okay, have been described in the proteins of the cilia and flagella. They are responsible for the immotile cilia syndrome whose symptoms are chronic uh, respiratory infections caused by the lack of cleansing action of cilia in the respiratory tract and immotile spermatozoa causing male infertility. Okay. So, you can see the immotile spermatozoa, it causes male infertility. Now, going to the next uh, clinical application, okay, chronic bronchitis. It is common among uh, habitual smokers. Okay? This increases greatly the number of goblet cells in the lining of airways in the lungs. This leads to excessive mucus production in areas where there are too few ciliated cells for its rapid removal and contributes to the obstruction of the airways. The pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium lining the bronchi of smokers can also be transformed into stratified squamous epithelium by metaplasia. 
okay so another clinical application acne okay um in the skin the holocrine sebaceous glands are the primary structure involved in the common form of acne or acne vulgaris surge of the steroid hormone testosterone that occurs in both genders at puberty triggers the excessive holocrine secretion of sebum and keratin which frequently leads to blocked ducts within the gland activity of the abnormal skin bacterium propionibacterium acnes within the blocked duct commonly produces localized inflammation join my facebook community link in the description like share and subscribe thank you for watching join my facebook community link in the description like share and subscribe thank you for watching